got to take it down by Abdel Anderson. Anderson uh, flattens one of the Lions. Offensive foul on Anderson. As he knocked one Mitchell to the court. Lions get the ball right back, and they've got another shot at going on top. After Ricky Free missed the five-foot throw to the first substitution of the game now. Van Nance coming in for the Scarlet Knights, six-four junior guard from the nation's capital. He's been a part-time player for two years, and they figure this is the year Stan Nancy that has to produce for Rutgers or just not make it at all. So Stan Nancy in the game. Lions get the ball underneath the basket. And, by the way, Abdel Anderson, a 6'7 center, was the man who checked out. So Rutgers losing a bit on the height, but looking for the quickness on that switch. They rub the court off as Burr, uh, Mitchell rather hit rather hard, got a sweat on the floor. Now the Lions set up for the inbound throw underneath the basket. Once again, Columbia moves to all left there, the visiting team, with 13.37 to go in the first half of play. Looks in for Connor, throws to Love. Now Love way outside on the near side, zips it ahead of the circle to Connor. Feeds back for Bird, they'll start the attack as Rutgers goes into his own defense. Lions. Daring Rutgers to come out. Bird holding on to the ball. Now goes right side to Ricky Free. He holds it over his head. Back to Bird. Conlon goes for the steal. Misses Bird. Oh, Free in the corner. Drives home. Puts up the six-foot jumper off the back rim. No good. Rebound comes out. And it's taken off by Rutgers. Breaking quickly. Ed Jordan comes down court. Feeds in the corner for Hollis Copeland. He lays it in. Hollis Copeland gives Rutgers the lead. 14-12, the fast break. They caught the Lions sagging back. Feeds them down court. And the full court press again by the Scarlet Knights. Conlon on Bird. Allen works it out slowly across him, uh, against him. Now comes into Rutgers' zone, goes to the far sideline. Bird dribbling slowly now, still with the ball. Goes under the circle, near side for Connery, spins, goes in the corner, looks left. Mitchell, Mitchell back to Love. Love drives, baseline, lays it up over the window. Good foul on the play. Let's see if it's offensive or defensive. The offensive foul on Elmer Love. And Elmer Love, one man in the Lions did not want to see in foul trouble. He's been in it plenty last year. As you uh, will hear at halftime, Tom Penders talks about the foul situation on the Lions and uh, how he can afford to give fouls this year, but he would prefer to see Alton Bird, Ricky Free, and Elmer Love not giving fouls. He feels they are not nearly as expendable as any other players the Lions might have. Right now, Rutgers on the attack. Nance with the ball. Bounces it far side for Jordan, the 15-foot pop. No good. Mitchell loses the rebound. Now comes down with it and spins away from one man. Drops it off to Alton Bird. Quickly across the timeline, they try and break the Rutgers press and do Bird. 18-foot pop. Rims comes out. Rebound taken by Kinder. And then hook shot. Rolls around. Drops free. And the rebound taken off by the Scarlet Knights. The height of the Scarlet Knights. Really telling tonight. Kyler breaks quickly. Has it stolen away by Bird. A free round. He saves it from going out of bounds. A great individual effort by Ricky Free. Drops it off the love to Bird. Quickly in the corner. Now Kyler to Bird. He's in the lane. He tries. He gives a couple of fakes. That goes underneath the Mitchell. Lays it up and in. That would have been goaltending. Mitchell got fouled on the play also. So Juan Mitchell again looking for the three-point play. The Rutgers gym has gone strangely silent since Hollis Copeland had hit that uh, break for Rutgers. Of course, the gym never goes totally silent, but uh, this is about as close as you'll ever get. The fans here started filing in a good hour before the game began. They really love their basketball here in New Brunswick. With 11.35 to go, the free throw is up and good. 15-14, the Lions are on top. And now Todd Milligan has come in the game. Milligan, a 6'6 uh, freshman forward, checks in. And a timeout is taken by the Scarlet Knights. Well, last year, you know, Rutgers won the Poinsettia Classic by defeating the Citadel and Georgia Tech. This year, Columbia will be the northern representative at the Poinsettia, and the Citadel will be there again. We'd like to say WKCR FM will be there also, but at this point, we can't. The reason is simple. We just don't have the money to cover both the Marshall Invitational next weekend. Georgia Tech will be there, by the way, and the Poinsettia Classic on December 28th and 29th. We're asking you, our listeners, to help us out. Please send your tax-deductible contributions to the special WKCR Tournament Fund we've set up. Its address is the WKCR Tournament Fund, 208 Ferris Booth Hall, Columbia University, New York, New York, 10027. That's 208 Ferris Booth Hall, Columbia University, New York, New York, 10027. Make your checks payable to Columbia University, but with the words WKCR Tournament Fund written somewhere on the front of the check. WKCR Sports thanks you, and the address once again for our tax-deductible tournament fund is 208 Ferris Booth Hall, Columbia University, New York, New York, 10027. Help us get to the Point Center Classic, bring you more exciting Columbia basketball, and Coach Tom Penders will also be talking at halftime about the way Penn blew the Citadel out last night in Philadelphia. He was at that game, and so he has seen the Citadel play. The Lions will be facing them in the uh, first round of the Point Center Classic, so help us out. As play begins, the Rutgers cheerleaders trot off the floor. Rutgers 
tries to break a full court brush by Columbia. Connor gets beat down the court. Far side now with the ball. Hollis Copeland looks for an outlet. Gets trapped off by three lines. Feeds outside for Jordan. About 25 feet out near side for Conlon. Swept away by Bird. Jordan chases it down. Let's it go out of bounds in the Rutgers back court. But no back court foul called as uh, Bird was one who swapped it away. Rutgers retains possession with 11-11 to go in the first half. 15-14. The Lions have their first lead in about seven or eight minutes. Right now underneath the basket. The shot taken. Rims comes out. Rebound. Fourth four. And over left takes it away. Take a right back by uh, one of the Rutgers players. Milligan loses to Bird. Bird fast breaks. The love lays up and in. And the Lions win by three. Columbia going really wild on the bench to our right. Rutgers way down at the end to our left. And Tom Young beginning to talk to his players down there. He's grabbing that towel that was made so famous at the uh, NCAA tournament last year. Rutgers comes down. The shot goes off the backboard. No good. Bird pulls the bound. Comes down across midcourt. Alan Bird working on Mark Conlon. Feeds in the far corner for Connor. Connor looks inside for Love again. Love spins. Tries to get away now. Has to look outside. Spots Bird. 25 feet out. Mitchell 25 feet out. Three hits it. The Lions win it by five. 19-14 with 10-20 to go in the first half of play. Columbia up by five points. And they are looking for the biggest upset in several years. Rutgers, of course, has not lost a regular season game in over, in over a season now. They went undefeated in the regular season last year and won their first game of the year three nights ago. So Ed Jordan now with the ball, guarded closely by Ricky Free. Free not giving him an inch. And feeds over far side for Kelly. Uh, makes a stand there. Rebound comes off to Ricky Free. Green feeds off the bird. Bird across the timeline with 9.52 to go in the first half. And dribbles it slowly. Bounds pass to Love at the free throw line. Love looks inside, back door, no go there. Feeds in the far corner for Codner. Codner looks inside, now backs his way and forces the pass back outside to Mitchell. Cross court to Love, he's 10 feet out, drives, hold, lays it up, rejects it. And Rutgers comes out, court offensive foul called. And so at 9.34 to go in the first half of play for the rest of the first half, Russ Behrman. Thank you very much, Steve Cottlebaum. Uh, the Columbia Lions right here looking for time out. Tom Penders giving the signal lion bench coming up and standing and applauding. Lions have come out very intense here in the first half. They lead Rutgers by the score of 19 to 14 with 9 minutes and 34 seconds to play in the first half. And of course, last year, the Rutgers Scarlet Knights whipped the Lions. They led them by 30 points at the half by the score of 61 to 31 and beat them by the final of 94 to 65. Two years ago, Rutgers ripped off 114 points in the gym. But tonight, the Lions are tenacious under the boards, even though they're playing a team that outmans them uh, severely in height. Rutgers going with uh, Hollis Copeland, who's 6'6". They also have Abdel Anderson, who's 6'7". Jim Bailey, who's 6'9". But the Lions seem to be rebounding very well with the Rutgers Scarlet Knights thus far. The Lions are absolutely intense on the bench as they break the huddle with Tom Penders going with Juan Mitchell, Shane Cotner, Elmer Love, Ricky Frey, and Alton Bird. Rutgers still huddling up with Coach Tom Young. It would be quite a feat if the Lions could somehow pull out something here at the barn. And as Steve was mentioning earlier, and as you can hear, the barn is just an unbelievable basketball arena. It is loud, it is noisy, it is small. 2,800 people have packed it. Most of them are for Rutgers with a very noisy band, and Rutgers now inbounds from the backcourt. Stan Nance gets it over to Mark Conlon. He's going to take the right-hand dribble and bring it across the midcourt line. Lions go into the 2-3 zone, intercepted by Ricky Free. He gives up Alton Bird with the move into the lane, he comes out. Good play by Bird to the head of the circle. Off the steal by Ricky Freebird, slowing it down on the Lions, going to the four corner with 9-12 to play in the first half. Columbia by 5, 19-14. Bird accelerates, gives off Elmer Love. Now back to Bird and he goes between the circles. Fans don't like it, but the Lions working in effective four corners. Bird gives to Mitchell on the far corner, now gets it back to Bird at the foul line, gives off Elmer Love. He's 20 feet away, far side, gives back out to Bird, who cuts to the near side, switching hands on the triple head of the circle. Rutgers in the zone, Lions would like to see them come out of the zone. Now they switch to a man-to-man, and let's see if the Lions come out of that zone. Five-second call, Shane Cutner getting tied up by the Rutgers defense about 40 feet away, and so we'll have a jump ball. Lions face a possible turnover here. Cotner will jump it up against, it looks like it's going to be Todd Milligan, the freshman from Somerset, New Jersey, who goes 6-6. And the tap is controlled by Rutgers. They get the ball back. Tomlin, far side, gives over to Jordan. 
Fred went for the steal. Jordan just able to recover ahead of the circle to Conlon. Lions in a 3-2 zone at the moment. Conlon goes far side to Jordan, holds up four fingers and signals a play. Jordan goes to his right, gives off Conlon, cross court to Nance. On the far side, 20 feet away, pulls up and stops. Head of the circle, Jordan, as he goes in, offensive foul. Ed Jordan running over Alton Bird, offensive foul. Good play by Bird, drawing that foul. Lions get a substitution here. Dave Hassan coming in, replacing Shane Cotner in the Lion lineup. And now Ricky Free will inbound for Columbia, 8-16 to play in the first half. The Lions 19, Rutgers 14. Certainly the Lions slowing down Rutgers game and playing a very fine controlled ball game. Head of the circle, Alton Bird in the forecourt. He gets a pass back from Dave Hassan, and he goes to work between the circles. Bird to the foul line now, loses the basketball off a steal. Sam Nance, one bounce, Ed Jordan drives away, misses an open way, a three bound pulled by Ricky Free. Scramble underneath, Conlon dives to the court for the ball, hands off to Todd Milligan, back to Conlon, far side, Ed Jordan, Scarlet nice in possession, Sam Nance side, jump though, good rebound underneath, Conlon bumps into his own man, and out comes out with the ball out of the circle. Comes near side to Stan Nance, head of the circle to Mark Conlon. Near side, Nance going to take it from 20 short. The rebound is pulled by Nance again. Rutgers controlling the boards right here. Milligan from 15 over the hands of Hassan. Hup, no good. Rutgers cannot buy a basket. Rebound pulled by Dave Hassan, and he gives off Altenburg. Long down court pass. Juan Mitchell not working. He threw it out of bounds. 19 to 14, Lions on top of five, 7-18 to play in the first half. Columbia is playing a fine ball game, except for that uh, one streak right there. Rutgers has just called the timeout, except for that one streak right there where Rutgers was getting the offensive rebounds, but the Lions are certainly more intense than Rutgers tonight. Uh, Rutgers cannot seem to get things going. Their shooting is absolutely horrendous. Uh, we do not have the official statistics because we did get on the air late. But we see that Ed Jordan, uh, unofficially two for five. Hollis Copeland, the only man who has been able to dent the court significantly, three for five. John Kelly, 0 for one, and Stan Nance, 0 for two. But uh, I am sure that the Rutgers shooting statistics are even worse than that because Rutgers just cannot buy a basket. So we shall see the Lions surprising everybody here playing very well. And if it wasn't for some mistakes, uh, that last play where Altenburg came out of the backcourt with the long downcourt pass, Juan Mitchell all alone, and Mitchell could not hit the open layup. Uh, actually, Mitchell did not see the pass. He would have had an open layup, and it went out of bounds. No scoring in the last couple of minutes as both teams appear a little bit nervous, I guess. Their shooting isn't that good, and they've been committing a lot of turnovers. But certainly one of the most exciting first halves that we have seen at Columbia basketball in quite a while. 7-18 to play first half. Rutgers coming off the timeout. The Lions lead by the score of 19-14 here in New Brunswick, New Jersey. Over WKCR FM 89.9 on your dial in New York City. Rush Brown along with Steve Tottenham as the Rutgers Scarlet Knights inbound off the timeout coming out of the backcourt. Mark Conlon on the far side, gets it up to Stan Nance. Lions continue their full court pressure and the zone defense working the 2-3. Bird and free at the top of the zone. It comes to Nance, gives head of the circle to Mark Conlon. Back to Nance. Rutgers trying to break this Columbia zone, which has been very effective thus far. Now to Conlon, head of the circle. He goes in the corner to Bally for the jumper gun. Make that Hollis Copeland, make that Hollis Copeland from the near corner from 15. Copeland sinks at 19-16, the Lions by three, with 6.41 to play in the first half. Alton Bird with the basketball, the one bounce near side, Mitchell. He gives head of the circle to Elmer Love. Rutgers playing the man for man. Underneath, Juan Mitchell lays it in. Elmer Love found Juan Mitchell on the back door, cutting underneath. And the Lions go back up by five, their first basket in quite a while. They lead 21-16. 6.20 to play in the first half. And now Ed Jordan throws the ball out of bounds off a lion hand down the other way. And so Rutgers retains possession of the basketball. Jordan to inbounds. 21-16, Columbia by five. 6.18 to play in the first half. Ball comes off the inbounds, head of the circle, Mark Conlon. Rutgers working it around to the near side for Eddie Jordan. He holds 20 feet away, gives near side to Stan Nance. Hassan guarding him in the zone here, there, now far side to Mark Conlon. Holds it up looking for Jordan. Can't find him now, head of the circle to Eddie Jordan. Far side, Nance, head of the circle, Jordan. Off the pick, gives off to uh, Conlon for the long jumper. No good rebound, tough underneath Nance. And he gets fouled as he tries to put up the shot by Altenburg. Alton Bird hits him. Two shots coming up right here for Stan Nance. 
That's the first on board, the 16th foul for the Lions, and Stan Nance going to the line. Unofficially, he has no points on the night. Lions lead 21-16, to 16, 5 minutes, 52 seconds to play in the first half. Nance looks up, here's his first, it is good. Nance, a junior, for the Scarlet Knights, part-timer for two years, 6'4 guard out of Washington, D.C. Jim Quiet, 21-17, the Lion lead is four. Here's the second by Nance. It is round, no good rebound. Elmer Love tips it off to Ricky Free, gives up a fast-breaking Altenburg. Long down court to Mitchell, he tries, and it in. Beautiful pass by Altenburg. Right into the hands of Juan Mitchell, the Lions by 6, 23-17, 540 to play in the first half. Ed Jordan feeds off to Milligan. He drives, misses the shot for the foul before. Looks like they got uh, Elmer Love on the foul, pushing off as Todd Milligan was driving in. The Lions are over the limit. And Elmer Love coming out of the ballgame right now, replaced by Kevin McDonald for the Lions. Excuse me, Kevin Donahue for the Lions. Thinking of uh, the Pennsylvania Quakers, Kevin McDonald. Kevin Donahue in the ballgame for the Lions. Here's the first by Todd Milligan. It is up and good. He will have another. As the Lions are over the limit, on the one and one. 23 to 18, Lions opening a surprising five point lead, playing very well here in the first half. Second is good. 23 to 19 is the score. Rutgers down by four. Lions with the basketball. Alton Bird on the far side, holds up, looking, gives off Donahue. Donahue guarded off by Alice Copeland, gives outside to Bird. Bird at the foul line, looking, passes into Donahue. Long jumper, good. Donahue, far side, 20 feet, first two for Kevin Donahue. The Lions by six, 25 to 19, 5 11 to play in the first half. Eddie Jordan lops on high to Stan Nance near side. Back to Jordan, head of the circle. Jordan at uh, the head of the circle now nearly loses it to free. One bounce underneath to Conlon, who goes back outside to Jordan. Lions, very tenacious defense underneath. Jumper by Milligan, bank, no good. Rebound underneath, pulled by Dave Hassan. Hassan nearly tied up. Lions look for a foul, no call. He gets it off the ball handler, Alton Bird, and the sophomore from California brings it across. Between the circles, Bird at the at the top looking. He goes to his right, passes in the corner to Donahue as the Lions go back into a semi-four corner. Donahue moves to the foul line, jumper, no good rebound underneath. Ricky Free taps it up, no good rebound, taps no good rebound underneath. Juan Mitchell, he lays it up, and in. Juan Mitchell, the Lions with a scramble right there, getting the two points off the Mitchell. Scramble and the layup. Columbia by eight, 27-19. Conlon going in. And as he goes, a foul is called on Juan Mitchell. Conlon knocking into Mitchell this time. They don't go offensive. They go the defensive foul on Juan Mitchell. The Lions have opened a eight-point lead here in the first half, 27-19. to Four minutes and 15 seconds to play in that half. Mark Conlon will be on the foul line. Conlon, a senior, co-captain, 6'2", 175 pounds, out of Queens, New York. He'll be shooting two shots. Conlon looking up. Here's his first. It is good. Conlon was a starter for Rutgers in his freshman season. But with uh, Mike Dabney and Ed Jordan dominating uh, play for the Scarlet Knights the last couple of years, Mark Conlon has been relegated to bench duty, but back as a starter in his senior year. Here's the second. It is good again. So that uh, Lion lead now 27-21. And coming into the ballgame for Rutgers will be Rodney Duncan for the Rutgers Scarlet Knights. He replaces Mark Conlon. Into the forecourt, Alton Burke making the move at the back, head of the circle, gives all pass, and near side to Ricky Free. Free in a crowd, loses it to Juan Mitchell, though. Mitchell drives up, no good, tap good. Looks like Ricky Free picked up that tap. Lions controlling the boards on the offensive end. Very, very surprisingly, Free getting the credit, 29-21. Columbia by 8, 347 to play in the first half. Super first half for the Lions. And the amazing thing is they could be beating Rutgers by more. Near side, it comes to Stan Nance. Nance, 18 feet away, head of the circle, Milligan, the freshman jumper, no good rebound. It's pulled by Ricky Free, out of a crowd. Free comes out with a basketball, gives off Altenburg. Long down court, Hassan, off of Rutgers, hands out of bounds. Lions working that quick outlet pass by Altenburg so very well. And Bird certainly one of the stories here tonight playing 
a very good ball game with uh, not as many turnovers as he had against City. The Lions up by eight, 323 to play in the first half. Rutgers goes into a 2-1-2 zone right here, and the Lions go into their fourth corner. On the far side, Dave Hassan in the corner. Hassan finds no one guarding him, so he takes the shot and he got it. A defensive lapse for Rutgers. All of a sudden, Hassan all alone from 20. The Lions have opened up a 10-point first half lead with three minutes to play in the half. In the fourth court, Copeland far side looking. He gives outside to the freshman, Rodney Duncan. Duncan gives off the stand now. His 15-footer short rebound underneath by Milligan. He lays it in. Todd Milligan underneath. Four points for Milligan on the rebound layup. And the Lion lead is 8, 31 to 23 with 2.38 to play in the first half. Bird into the forecourt. Lions playing a much slower game than they did against City, but a much more controlled game. Bird at the head of the circle. He gives off Mitchell back to Bird. Between the circles, Bird working. A lot of movement for the Lions. Head of the circle free. Far side to Donahue in the corner. Donahue comes out to the foul line, back to the basket. Head of the circle, Hassan, and he gives back. South and Bird to slow it down. 2.16 to play in the first half. The Lions lead by eight. Bird underneath free. He drives, plays it in. Ricky free. Super, super, he's fouled on the play. Free getting hit, still made it. The foul goes. Let me hold up on this foul. We could not hear who the foul went on. So we'll hold up on that. Free will go to the line, shooting one. And Russ, you wouldn't expect Rodney Duncan, a freshman, to be in an impressive situation like this. He's in there for one reason only. He's the quickest person on the uh, Rutgers squad. He can go out and burn when nobody else can. Bree misses the foul shot. The foul went on Eddie Jordan into the forecourt quickly. Rutgers Lions by 10, 2-4 to play. Jordan, the short shot. No good rebound underneath. Nance offensive foul. Stan Nance on the rebound, running over Juan Mitchell, getting called with the offensive foul. Two minutes exactly. Remain in the first half. The Lions 33, Rutgers 23. This is the same Rutgers team, of course, minus Bill Sellers and Mike Dabney, that went to the final four in the NCAA last year. The Lions are beating them by 10 in their home court in the first half. Consider that for a moment, and you will uh, consider exactly where Lion basketball has come in the last year. Ricky Free will inbound. He is guarded by Ed Jordan. Rutgers going with the full court press. Free gives off to Alton Bird. Remember, we'll have Tom Penders on at halftime. Our pregame show getting cut off because of line difficulties, but Penders will be on with the pregame at halftime. He has a lot of interesting comments. Head of the circle, Kevin Donahue. He gives off to Alton Bird between the circles. Bird guarded by the quick Rodney Duncan, the freshman. Bird now moves to the foul line and stops. Jordan goes for the steal. Bird gives off the free. Open jumper from the head of the circle. Little too long. Rebound underneath. Passing the short one around. No good on the floor. The rebound pulled by Donahue jointly with the Rutgers player. And the Rutgers player won it. He got it out to Rodney Duncan. Hot one by Duncan. He looks good. First two for Duncan. Minute 19 to play in the first half. 33 to 25. The Lions on top by eight. Rodney Duncan, a version of Alton Bird. Bird a little more talented. Alley oop underneath. Ricky Free lays it in. Alton Bird from 40 feet out finding Ricky Free on the alley oop. The Lions still by 10. A minute one to play in the first half. Less than a minute now. Rodney Duncan brings it across. Gives to Stan Nance. Foul line jumper around. No good. Rebound pulled by Alton Bird. The Lions start up the fast break with 50 seconds to go in the first half. Bird at the head of the circle. Rodney Duncan comes up to meet him. Rutgers playing the Lions man for man. The Lions have been quicker than Rutgers tonight. Head of the circle, Alton Bird with 39 seconds. Underneath free, no good. Rebound pulled by Dave Hassan. The offensive rebound with 34. Hassan to the uh, near corner. And a whistle and a foul is called on Rutgers. Foul goes against... Let's see, it goes against Eddie Jordan. That is the third foul on Jordan here in the first half. And going to the foul line for the one and one will be Dave Hassan. 35 to 25, Lions by 10, 32 seconds to play in the first half. And if you listened to Columbia basketball last year, you may want to pinch yourself now. Dave Hassan with the first, it is good. The Lions by 11. Deal at the barn in New Brunswick, New Jersey. Dave Hassan sets for the second, it is up and it is good. The Lions by 12. 37 to 25, 30 seconds to play in the first half. 
Freshman Rodney Duncan with the basketball for Rutgers in the forecourt. With the right hand dribble, gives off Conlon near side. Cross court pass for Stan Nance. Rutgers going with the three guard offense all day. Down near side to Nance for the jumper good. Nance with the 15 footer. And Lion leads cut to 10. 12 seconds to play in the first half with 10. Bird across the line with 9. With 8. He goes to the far side with 6. Accelerates. Feels a short pop and a foul. Bird, as he went to the low post, drawing the foul on the far side. Let's see who they call. Looks like Mark Conlon on the hit. Shane Cotner is going to report in for the Lions, and he will replace Ricky Free in the Columbia lineup. There are only four seconds to play in the first half. Lions up by 10, 37-27. One of the most incredible first halves that we've seen Columbia basketball play in quite a while. Alton Bird, two shots. Here's the first that's good. The Lions by 11. And let's see, Alton will get another. Lions trying to work out their defense for the final minute. Checking into the ballgame, Abdel Anderson. For Rutgers, trying to get some height, maybe looking for the alley-oop play at the last second. Here's the second by Bird. Dip shoots good. Lions by 12. Now... Alex Copeland on the inbound, gives off to Anderson. One jumper with two. Wow, oh, no good. That's the buzzer. The score at halftime. I will repeat it twice. The score at halftime. The Columbia Lions, 39. The Rutgers Scarlet Knights, 27. Here it goes again. The Columbia Lions, 39. The Rutgers Scarlet Knights, 27. Steve? As you so aptly described it, Russ, the most incredible half of basketball the Lions have played in many, many a year. Since well before we've got there, we've been watching Columbia basketball for four years. This is absolutely incredible. The Rutgers bar is strangely silent. And at halftime now, we have Tom Penders, the Columbia coach. We originally intended it to be the pregame show, so you'll excuse us if uh, one or two things in the sound round. Thank you, Russ. The score once again is 39-27. The Lions on top. And now I see that the clock has uh, not been set for the second half of play. So it looks like we're going without a clock here on WKCR FM. And the rebound comes off to Shane Cotter. Quick out with the bug. Long down. Close to Mitchell. He's underneath the whole place. And rejected. Juan Mitchell gets the shot. Slaps away. And the Lions retain possession. Rutgers has come out charged up here in the second half. One of the keys. The Lions got Bailey and Anderson into foul trouble early in the first half. They will have to continue their pressure underneath. Possibly get those, uh, at least one of those men out of the ball game. That's right, Russ. Tom Penzi said if they could stay with Rutgers five minutes in the first half. It would be an interesting game. Now it becomes the first five minutes of the second half. Alton Bird with the jumper. No good. Rebound all oh, Rutgers. Adel Anderson surrounding the boys. Takes it down. It's Jordan. Quick across the timeline. To our left. The Rutgers Scarlet Knights go. Quick out. Let the Anderson in the corner. Feeds underneath that for Bailey. Bailey sent for the short. Rebound tapped up by Anderson. And slapped out of bounds. Columbia Bell. The fans don't like it much. But they haven't liked too much today. The Lions lead it still. 39-27. With 19.08 remaining in the second half of play. And now Rutgers goes to the press. Bird breaks it quickly, goes down the far sideline, skips to a stop. Now puts up the shot, fakes it back to kind of 12 foot jumper, rolls around, drops, goes good Anderson again. The only man on the board, and that's where the difference is. Free steals his pass, goes up to the layup, lays it in. Ricky Free makes the turnover count. Lions lead at 49 27. Another two points for Ricky Free. Quickly on the offense, Mark Conlon, the senior co captain. Comes down the corner, feeds off with the Bailey, hooks in the lane, offensive foul on Bailey. And Rush is just said it on Bailey. Got to watch the fouls. He's now has four. One more, he's gone, and he's got 18 minutes and 37 seconds. He's going to have to be careful. I don't believe it, Steve. Jim Bailey just went in with an elbow, and he had three fouls. I can't believe it. You would think that Tom Young would have told him to watch it and uh, not be too aggressive, especially not at the start. They cannot afford to lose that big strength inside. Alan Burst pass, slapped away, but knocked out of bounds by Mark Conlon. I think you mentioned in the first half, Russ, that Conlon comes from Queens. Bishop Riley student, now is going to St. Francis Prep. So a local boy, for some of you listeners, made all Catholic in New York City when he played there. So captain of the team. So the Lions inbound, comes to free, about 10 feet outside the uh, head of the circle, backs in. All right, Conlon, they get Conlon. That time, Conlon obviously looking to draw the offensive foul. An obvious play by Mark Conlon, and the ref picked it up, called the defensive foul on Conlon. Second on Conlon, second team foul, Lions inbound again to Bird, about 30 feet out. To Mitchell in the corner, puts up the shot, switches it. The Lions go up by 14, 41, 27. You know, the Lions aren't just beating the Scarlet Knights, they are routing them right now. 
the Lions shooting and rebounding that's doing it. And now it's the defense as much as on the attack can't get anywhere. Let's see, I think we've got a foul. Dave Hassan gets called for it. He stuck his arm in in front of Hollis Copeland, who was driving to the hoop. So a foul on Hassan. Uh, I believe that's his first team foul, uh, first team foul and the first on Hassan. So the Lions in a uh, good situation there, unlike Rutgers. Shot taken out from the corner by Jordan, rolls around, comes out, shot right side, up by Nansen in. Van Nance right there for the rebound, the 6'4 guard puts it in, cuts it to 43-29, with 1750. That's right, 1750 to go in this game, the Lions still lead. Collins takes it right away from Bird, not too many times to see that. Bird takes it right back. What a play by Alan Bird now, I think they really stuck on the end line. Collins just slapped it away from Bird as Alan made the mistake and looked away. Then Alan took it right back as Conlon went up for the shot. But uh, retrieving the ball out, stepped out of the baseline, so it's what you're throwing in underneath their own basket. The Stormer Knights trying to come back from the halftime deficit. Jordan inbounds to Hollis Copeland. Plus court back to Jordan outside, now to Conlon. And they set the attack. Lions in the zone, very patient. Rutgers, Copeland in the corner for court again to Jordan. He goes head of the circle, now backs his way out and feeds it to Conlon. Back in the corner now, Stan Nance. Cross court again, this time to Copeland. Puts up a 10 foot throw to rim and drops that rebound. Taps up and in. Looks like Abdel Anderson got the two. Lions at this time getting beaten under the board. They have to watch it because Rutgers is coming on. Alan Bird into the fourth court. Lions move to our right. The crowd says defense. Underneath the Hassan. Face it up. No good. Rebound. Slaps it out. Taken down by Anderson. Abdel Anderson. Put that one to Jordan. Here comes that fast three. Jordan into the lane. Eight foot floater. Feeds off one side. Conlon lays it up and in. 43 33. The Lion leads out down to 10. And Conlon has six. Lion leads down to 10. And the Columbia Lions at this moment. You hear the crowd here at the Rutgers Gymnasium. The Lions are getting a little frazzled. They're getting frazzled by the Rutgers team. Rutgers getting two and three offensive rebounds underneath. Also, Alton Bird kept his cool at the foul line. He found Ma- uh, Dave Hassan right in the low post. Hassan was uh, all alone, but he got a little frazzled in there, and Hassan uh, blew an open layup. The Lions are going to have to settle down right here. Good timeout by Coach Tenders. They still have a 10 point lead. There's 1651 to play in this ball game. Okay, Russ. Ten points for the Lions, and I think we're going to see Alma Love come back into the game now for Columbia. Alma, one of the Cardinal players on this team. Maybe that's what the Lions need right now. But some of the things trying to settle them down. They are getting nervous. The crowd here in the barn getting to them. As always, it's a full 2,800. I wouldn't be surprised if they stuck a couple of extra in here tonight. The Lions really ate up Rutgers when Rutgers didn't have the big men in. That's one of the keys to this ball game because Rutgers now is getting those offensive rebounds. If the Lions can get that fifth foul on Bailey, he's, by not, he's not in the ball game right now, but if they can get him out and if they can get a man like Abdel Anderson out of there, they will be in good shape. Rutgers goes to the full court press as Cotter has to throw it under his own basket. Looks for Mitchell, now gets it to Ricky Free. Big trapped inside his own zone, comes out down the sideline, foul. This time it's on Rutgers again. Bad situation for the Skull and I, something you would not expect from a team with their uh, experience and cool. Foul is on Abdel Anderson, his fourth personal foul. So uh, Rutgers in a lot of trouble. They have three team fouls already. Bird at the head of the free throw line, now sends it over to Love in the corner. Love backs it out, feeds the kind of inside the lane, backs it out to Bird, about 10 feet outside the key. Out, puts it between his legs, now goes into the lane, feeds it out for Mitchell, 12 foot pop, rims comes out, the Lions shooting with Brian Cole, and out go Anderson, pulls the bound. Quickly to Jordan, rushes on a semi-fast break in the corner now, Dan Nance with the jumper, hits hard, comes out, Dance gets his own rebound, and feeds it out in the corner. With the ball now, Jordan loses the ball, out of bounds. And it will remain uh, Rutgers' way as it was slapped out by Love. Yeah, it looked like the Lions slapped that one out. Ed Jordan coming out of a crowd. And uh, Eddie Jordan, the cool head on the court right now for Rutgers. Underneath that, uh, Rutgers' play gets free. It's man. He gets tipped up by Love. They're going to get on the low behind the foul. That's uh, three. Make that a foul on Mitchell. So... His second personal foul, and it will not be in a free, uh, free throw situation yet. Lions not yet near the limit. Quickly inbound, whipping the ball around the perimeter. Jordan, 20 foot top. So that lead is really going down. Jordan steals the inbound pass. 43 35. Rutgers down point again. A Jordan, 5 foot jumper. Whipping it in. The crowd rushes. 43 37. It's 
speed. Elmer Love is doing it in the clutch. Super performance. 12-19, 12-18, the clock running, 51-45. The Lions still lead it by six. They are not folded yet, although Rutgers is doing their damage to make sure they will. They're running the fast break a lot more effectively than in the first half. Man, outside for Duncan. They work the perimeter. Driving inside, Jordan, he's got fast plays up and in. The back door is killing the Lions right now. Ed Jordan, every time he penetrates, the Lions fall off to guard him, and he's fighting the open man underneath. Ed Jordan, a great, great guard tonight. Alton Bird into the fourth quarter. The love drives to the hoop. Beats it outside Condor. Jumper swishes. Jay Condor from 12 feet out. And it's back up to 6, 53, 47. 11, 39 to go in this half and in regulation time. Here at Rutgers Gymnasium, the barn, Columbia Lions basketball. The Lions 1-0 on the season. So is Rutgers. Both teams going for their second win. Now with the ball, Rodney Duncan in the far corner to Jordan. He drives, puts up the 18-footer. Rims comes out. Rebound spots around. We got a foul. No basket as the shot was missed in any event by Stan Nance attempting to jam it through the hoop. Foul on Columbia. Town Penders wants a timeout. Signal Shane Connor. And now the referee is explaining the foul and telling Tom Penders to get back on his half of the court before he calls an additional foul on Tom Penders. The foul was on Kevin Donahue, by the way. Crowd now hushes for a moment as the referees come over to talk it over with Coach Penders. Tom Young off the bench, holding on to that towel as tightly as you'll ever see him do. And Rutgers will have the inbound situation. Uh, Tom Young's record at Rutgers is 72 and 17, counting that win a uh, couple of days ago. See, Tom Penders may uh, just have to be very, very careful how much he gets on the official right here. He's uh, discussing things very amiably with him, but remember, two technical foul shots for any techni technical called on the coach. Right now, Rutgers on the attack. Stan Nance feeds it back outside for Ed Jordan, way outside. Gives to uh, Duncan. Takes the jumper, gets it right back as he feeds off. Duncan, 25 feet out. Feeds it off to Nance. Nance to Jordan. He penetrates, lays it up and in. Eddie Jordan, what can you say? The man is absolutely incredible in the second half. He has done absolutely everything. Full court pressure. Love to Bird. The Lions breaking with teamwork now. Out and Bird into the fourth goal with 10.47. To go in the second half of play. Lions up by four. 53-49. Ricky Free to Kinder. 15 feet out. Kinder. The high man rims comes out. Bird rebound. They got low. Puts in the turnaround jumper. Oh, my love. Just doing everything right now. 10.32. It's become a love Jordan battle right here as Ricky Free slaps away the lunches pass into the backcourt. But coming out with it is Duncan goes into the fourth court. Feeds over far side for Copeland. Copeland back for Jordan. The crowd trying to get the Rutgers team going. Here in the second half, back to Duncan. Looks inside. Love tries to slap it away. Shot put up by Copeland. Goes through. Oh, Copeland. Turn around. Leap. Puts it in with 10.09 to go in the second half of play. The Lions by 4.55-51 for the remainder of the second half. Russ Behrman. Thank you very much, Steve. Part of that ball alone. Kevin Johnny, you saw a lot of the rebound offensive now. Offensive foul called on the Columbia Lions on the rebound, and we go down the other way. Personal called against Kevin Donahue. That's the second foul on Donahue. And Dave Hassan will be coming in now for the Lions. Let's see who he's going to replace. We have foul shots as uh, the Lions have gone over the foul limit. Ricky Free coming out of the ball game for Columbia for Dave Hassan. And coming to the foul line for Rutgers will be Stan Nance. Nance, one for two from the line thus far, nine points on the night. 55-51, the Lions on top, 9.59 to go in the second half. Here's the first by Nance, it is good. We'll get another. Rutgers has cut the Columbia margin to three. Lions at one point in the second half had built up a 16-point lead. Here's the second by Nance. The 6'4 guard looks up the gym quiet. Here's the second around short. A rebound off a lion hand, but it will be called lion basketball. Must have been touched by Rutgers before it went out of bounds. So Elmer Love will inbound against full court Rutgers pressure. He finds Kevin Donahue double teams in the corner. Donahue calls timeout. Kevin Donahue double teams in the corner calling the timeout. The Lions may need that timeout later. So with 9.55 remaining to play in the ballgame, the Lions lead the Rutgers Charlotte Knights by the score of 55 to 52. 
I didn't say the Lions will need that timeout later, Rush. Well, they need it right now, too. Rutgers is really coming on strong. They throw by only three. The Lions getting rattled. Seven Donnie, you kept his head in that situation. Did the wise thing. Triple teamed in the corner with nowhere to go. He called the timeout. For the calling the timeout. The Lions may need that timeout later. So, with 9.55 remaining to play in the ballgame, the Lions lead the Western Charlotte Knights by the score of 55 to 52. I didn't say the Lions will need that timeout later. Or, well, they need it right now, too. Westerners is really coming on strong, and they fell by only three. The Lions getting rattled. Kevin Donnie is set in that situation. Did the wise thing. Triple teamed in the corner with nowhere to go. He called the timeout. After mention some of the super plays in this ballgame, especially by Hollis Copeland. He has been unbelievable underneath. He jammed the ball several times. In 14 points in the ballgame, off a 7 for 9. Floor shooting performance. Van Nam has shipped in 10 points, but Nam is showing the mistakes that an inexperienced junior guard will make. 12 points for Eddie Jordan, but far for the Lions, Elmer Love has come up with eight second half points, and he has been to put you underneath in the second half. Leading score for the Lions in the ballgame, Juan Mitchell with 18, Ricky Free has 13. This has turned into some ball game. The Lions on top, 55 to 52, with nine minutes and 55 seconds to play in the ballgame. They will be inbounding. On the backboard, Rutgers entering the court. They go with Hollis Copeland, Jim Bailey, Ed Jordan, Rodney Duncan, and Stan Nance. As they come onto the court, the Lions line up with Ricky Free, Juan Mitchell, Dave Hatton, Elmer Love, and Alvin Bird. And Rutgers staying in the backboard. They're going to pressure the Lions. And to man, it has been somewhat effective in firing out the Lions. Lions are basically sophomore junior ball club, and they're having problems with that stolen by Jim Bailey, but he throws the way down to the Going down to a Ricky Free, all alone he does. Ricky Free, the first slam of the night for the Lions. They go ahead by five, 57-52 with 9.43 to play. In the fourth court, Eddie Jordan goes near side to stand down. Stamps 20 feet away, head of the circle, Rodney Duncan. Left this with the three court. Jordan near side, 20 footer, no good. Rebound, Bailey, no good. Rebound, Bailey, kick, no good. Rebound, pulled by Alpenberg. He's ahead of the field. He drives away, and he lays it in. Alpenberg. The Lions have come up with two buckets. They lead 59 52. Suffice it to say, they are going crazy on the bench. Near side, cuts off in the corner. Jordan gets off the net, flies high third. Then from the far side, 25 footer, 14 points for them. And the Lions lead 59 54, 9 01 to play in the ball game. Head of the circle happens. Near side to left drive. Face line, lays it in. Offensive foul on Mark. The basket will count. The basket will count. But Elmer Love driving in on the offensive foul. James Brown very disappointed at Elmer on that play. As Elmer went in with the elbow. Tom Denver's very annoyed that the bucket was counted, but somehow there was a charging on the play, too. He can't understand that. And right now, Shane Cotner coming in, replacing Elmer Love in the Lions lineup. Love leaves with four personal fouls for Columbia. The Lions are up 61 to 54, 856 to play in the ballgame. Sam Nance will try to get those two points back, shooting one and one. Sam's five for 12 from the floor, and he is two for four from the line. Here's the first by Nance. It is no good, and the rebound is pulled by Shane Cotner. So Sam Nance couldn't hit the key foul shot. One down for Jordan, knocked away. Let's see which way they go. It's saved by Rutgers. Eddie Jordan, fast break out of the backboard. Jordan to the foul line underneath. Knocked away by Juan Mitchell, and he saves it for the Lions. It's off to Ricky Free, fast break the other way. Free, one bounce to uh, Shane Cotter in the race today. Alpenberg gave it to Shane Cotton, the Lions back up by 9, 63 to 54, eight and a half to play in the ballgame. Coming back the other way, it's Fletcher for uh, Hollis Copeland, the couple goes from the bar side. Copeland from 15, Fletcher cuts the lead, 63 to 56, three, drives down the way, near post, jump around, no good rebound, thanks off to the Lakers, Starlin Mike, fast break, Jim Bailey, gets off second couple there. Duncan wins the bag from five, Fletcher has cut the margin to five, 63 to 58. They are running back and forth in this ball game. Alton Bird into the fourth court for the Lions. Bird about 15 feet away, comes out of the circle. Gives off Mitchell, going to take it from 18 guns. Ron Mitchell, near side, Lions shooting incredibly in tension situation, 745. The play in the ball game, and the Lions lead 65 58. Lions in the man to man. Near side, it comes Eddie Jordan at the baseline. Jordan guarded off by Ricky Free. Free trailing. Jordan goes to Rodney Duncan, far side to stand there. Comes back outside. Eddie Jordan, Rutgers slowing it down. Hollis Copeland, the side, guarded by Hatton. Which the juke gives outside Jordan, far side now to Rodney Duncan. Makes the move on, Burke stops, gives off Copeland. Underneath Jordan, all alone, he moves in back, no good rebound, a foul. They catch Ricky Free underneath. 
And so, going to the foul line will be Eddie Jordan. The Lions lead 65 to 58, 715 to play in the ball game. During that last time out, the Lions diagrams what seems to be a backdoor play, taking a quick look at uh, Coach Maher's diagram. Lions haven't run yet because they were beating Westerners at their own game, namely the steal and the fast play. They hit a few in a row, put the lead back up. They haven't yet run the dead play, and uh, that's what's keeping them in the game right now. They haven't had to slow it down. They've been running it at their own pace. Believe it or not, Westerners, the final four team of last year, may be feeling some pressure now. Eddie Jordan, this is the first foul shot. They haven't been beaten in the barn in quite a while. Now Mark Conlon, the senior guard, comes in replacing Rodney Duncan, the freshman. Here's the second by Jordan. It is good. 65 to 59. Lion lead of six. Bird comes out of the backcourt. 7-12 to play. Bird at the head of the circle. He just talked to Coach Spencer's with the way to strategy. Comes underneath. Two games. Hops back outside. Out the Bird. Bird guarded off by Eddie Jordan. Lion with the movement. Now the weave. Bird goes in. Lays it in off the glass. Out in Bird. No defense at all. Getting away from Jordan. Seven points for Bird, and here comes Rutgers up the other way. Lions go into the zone, 67-59. Lions up by eight, 647 to play in the ballgame. Jordan goes out of the circle to Copeland, cross court to Conlon, looks from 20, gives off to Anderson, for the up for no good. And the rebound is pulled by Shane Cotner. Cotner gets it out to Ricky Free. Bob Fender's calling for the four corners, nearly stolen away. Now Mark Conlon does steal it. He drives down on Bird, lays it in. Lions couldn't get the four corners right there. Instead, they lost the basketball, and they'll try to start it up again, leading 67-61 with 6-16 to play in the ballgame. And as Alton Bird moves, he is fouled by Mark Conlon. In the backcourt, Conlon commits the foul. Non-shooting situation. Lions will inbound from the backcourt. Shane Cotton had inbound for the Lions. Columbia up 67-61, 6-14 to play in the ballgame. If you don't believe it, I assure you, neither do we. Alton Bird in the backcourt. He's going to dribble it up against Mark Conlon. Comes right to the center of the court. Bird far side spins. Comes to the foul line. Here's his pop around. No good rebound. It's pulled by Abdel Anderson. Gets it up to Mark Conlon. Conlon racing for the basketball. Finds it in the far corner. Gets it outside to Eddie Jordan. Jordan far side to Conlon. Big line around. No good rebound. Pulled by Alton Bird. Fast break by him. Bird, near side, moves to the foul line. It's a couple shots from behind. One more time. Conlon gets off to Eddie Jordan. Runs it. Stay back and foul on Anderson. Anderson was moving with it that time. Good call. Good call by the official. Third foul on Dave Hassan. And so, going to the foul line, will be the left to call at night. Lions holding the six-point lead, 67-61, with 5.42 to play in the ballgame. You know, Steve, win or lose, this is a great game for the Lions to play in. They are playing well, under pressure, at the Lecter's home gymnasium, one of the toughest places to play, I would say, in the country. The noise here is unbelievable, and the Lions certainly will bode well for games later on at home and on the road and in the Ivy League season, regardless of what they do in this ballgame. And right now, they are playing hit to head, nose to nose, and leading the Lecter's Scarlet Knights by five points, 67 to 62, with 542 to play. And quickly, this makes our drive for uh, covering those tournament games all the more credible. Columbia fans does have an exciting and representative basketball team this year. The Lions could very well win that tournament down in South Carolina. We want to cover it, and we'll give you the address to write you with your tax deductible contribution a little later in the broadcast. We hope you will contribute to this. Of his one and one, Jordan has 14 points in the ballgame, two for three from the foul line, six for 12 from the floor. Lions with the hands up on the foul line. Here's the shot by Jordan. It's good. But there's just the Lion lead to five, 67-62, Lions inbounding. Altenberg gets away from two, comes to the head of the circle. Altenberg out running Rutgers all night. Bird to the foul line, gets away from Conlon, tries to get out of your bunker, he's 53 on one way for this. That time, Bird went back to the offense, looks for three underneath the Lions by six, 69-63. Jordan gets pressure from Mitchell in the fourth court. Tom Tenders calling out, no, he doesn't want the foul. And now it goes off the leg of Abdel Anderson and recovered by Juan Mitchell. Altenburg bringing it up across the timeline. Lions slowing it down. 69-63. Lions by 6 504 to play in the ball game. Bird comes in for 10 foot partially blocked by Alex Copeland. Rebound taken by Anderson. Goes four court to Mark Tomlin. Bird shooting a bit too much in this situation. Here side to Copeland. Long jump for no good rebound. Doesn't need no good rebound. Would you believe Ricky Free? Free, long alley of Juan Mitchell. He's all alone. He tries. Gets away from one way for this. Good play by Juan Mitchell. The Lions are up now. 71 to 63. Rutgers, no matter how hard they try, just cannot come back. 
four and a half to play in the ball game. In the fourth court, Copeland, 20 foot ago. From the side, Holland Copeland. Back and forth, this ball game goes. Lions continuing to maintain control, 71-65. Alton Burt, Bob, gets it into the fourth court. Goes head of the circle, Cocker, back to Burt. Burt, 20 feet away, moves to the head of the circle, gets off the three underneath in a crowd. And then three, he gains possession and lays it in. Nearly lost it. Look at three, lays it in. Alton Burt steals off the inbound, lays it in. The Lions have gone up right there. Four minutes to play in the ball game. They lead 75 65. Lions go into the zone on defense. Mark Conlon just head of the circle. Howard goes from the jumper. Short the rebound. Alton Bird. Alton Bird pulled that rebound. Long down court. That's one missile. Oh, he likes it. 77 65. The Lions by 12. 340 to play in the ball game. Do you believe in this Lions team? Head of the circle. Eddie Jordan comes near side to Mark Conlon. Conlon to the baseline. He gives off to Jim Bailey. And Bailey looks. The ball goes out of bounds. We'll see which way they call it. Looks like Rutgers basketball. Substitutions. Rodney Duncan coming in for the Scarlet Knights. And Elmer Love for the Lions along with Kevin Donahue with a foul calls on that play. A foul on Ricky Free. Ricky Free has fouled out of the ball game. What a game for Ricky Free. Standing ovation by the 50 or so Columbia fans here. Ricky Free has fouled out. Three leaving. Let's see if we can get a stat here quickly. Three leaving with 19 points on the night. A key to the Lions' success. Here's the first by Bailey. It is no good on the one and one. Rebound pulled by Bailey. He goes in. The shot no good. And let's see. We have a look on another foul on the Lions. Tom Penders has gone to the midcourt line looking for a correctable error. We're not exactly sure what the call is. But it looks like they may correct the call. The referees appear to be in agreement with Penders. The foul is gone against Shane Potter. And there is a lot of discussion now at midcourt between Tom Penders and the officials. Steve, do you know exactly what's going on here? Well, at first they thought uh, the situation wasn't a foul, the Lions. But the Lions bench really feels the referees are giving them a bum rap right now. If there are too many blocking fouls being called on Columbia and too many charging fouls being called on Columbia, if they're not being fair at both ends of the court, and that's what the Columbia coaches are really incensed about, not about individual fouls. And right now, all three Columbia coaches conferring at the midcourt line. The Lions are playing the game under protest now because they did not have time to substitute for Ricky Free. The Lions get one minute to substitute for Ricky Free, and Rutgers' Jim Bailey took that foul shot before the minute was up. So the Lions are playing this game under protest. That certainly is a correctable error. The Lions do get the 60 Jeff Combs has been placed in his first part to the action. Not to see how much the flu is bothering Jeff. I assume that in a game like this, you don't put a player in unless you get full screen. Here's the first five, Bailey. It's no good. Lions want some steadiness and some shooting in that backcourt. Bailey will try again. 77-65. The Lion lead is 12. 3.26 to play in the ball game. Here's the second by Bailey. It is good. Lions lead by 11. 77-66. Stan Ham coming in for the Western Scarlet Knights. Replacing Jim Bailey. So Rutgers may be going for speed on defense right here. As Alton Bird has outflicked them all night. They put two men on Bird. He goes behind the back and gets it across the midcourt line. Bird far side. Lions looking for the four quarters. Bird throws it out to Kevin Donahue. Near side, Jeff Combs. Combs looking, dribbles into the near corner. Looking again, gets away from two, gives off to Alton Bird. Bird at the midcourt line, between the circles, head of the circle, looking, and we got a whistle on a foul against Eddie Jordan. That's the fourth foul on Eddie Jordan. Going to the foul line now, I believe, no, still only five team fouls for Rutgers. Rutgers with the fouls to give, and so the Lions will inbound. 77 60 in by 11, clock running down, 305 to play. We may be listening in or looking in on one of the big upsets in Eastern basketball this season. Jeff Combs goes to his knees, dribbles once, gives off to Elmer Love, and then Love throws it away, looking for Kevin Donahue underneath. You know, Steve. If the Lions were in such an inexperienced team, it would be no contest tonight. Into the forecourt. Eddie Jordan with the basketball. Head of the circle, 254 to play. Jordan gives up underneath to Abdel Anderson, was farther underneath to Sam Ham, and he misses the easy chippy. The rebound is pulled by Kevin Donahue after a scramble. Donahue gives out to Alton Bird. Bird's going to come across the midcourt line. Bird is guarded there by Rodney Duggan, and now a whistle and a foul on Duggan. That's the 16th foul on Duggan, the next one, and the Lions will be shooting. 
Right now, it's the Alton Burns show, and there's nobody in this gymnasium who doesn't know it. And Rutgers is willing to foul him. They're just not going to let him kill that clock, because that's what they're really fighting now with the 11-point uh, deficit. Two minutes, 37 seconds to play in the ballgame. The Lions lead by 11. 77 to 66. Shane Cotner inbounding right from our broadcast location. He gives it off to Alton Bird. Bird between the circles. He goes into the head of the circle. Beautiful ball control by Bird. Goes to the far side. Comes back with it. There he drives the lane and lays it up. No good. The rebound is pulled by Jeff Combs and he feeds off to Shane Cotner. Far side Donahue, 220 to play. Gives off to Cotner. Lions by 11. Cotner runs into Eddie Jordan and Jordan knocks the ball out of bounds. I know the coaches are having fits with Allen driving down the middle. He should stay outside. They don't need the points right now. He should stay outside. And Jeff Combs is the one who Got him back outside that time. Good play by Jeff. Even in this ball game, Alton Bird still showing some hot dog maneuvers. In the forecourt, Elmer Love underneath. Oh, long Jeff comes, but he won't shoot. Smart play. Gives it out to Kevin Donahue. The Lions continue to kill the clock. 2.08 to play in the ball game. Alton Bird with a barn in the corner of it. Jeff Combs gives that side to Shane Tucker at the midcourt line. Lions have played this delay game in practice all the time. They are looking great at it right now. Shane Tucker gives that to Alton Bird. Standing ovation for the Lions from their forces. Gives off to Bird as Bird goes. Let's see, I believe they called a foul on Bird. Fouling Eddie Jordan. Personal on Alton Bird. One minute, 48 seconds to play. 77-66, the Lions lead by 11. Inbounding will be Director Charlotte Knight. Jordan gives up to Copeland. He's going to have to shoot Cass and he can't it. Copeland from 20. Lion lead up to 9, 77-68. Alton Bird out of the backcourt. Clock shows 136. Bird throws it. Combs all alone and deep plays it in. First two for Combs this year. Lions back up by 11, 79-68. Less than a minute half to play. In the fourth court, Rodney Duncan. And outside to Jordan. Long, long bob good. Jordan from 30. He had to take it. Rutgers down still by 9, 79-70. Combs really loses it off Eddie Jordan. And Jeff Combs retains possession. 79-70, the Lions by nine, a minute 16 to play in the ballgame. They are beating the Western Scarlet Knights. Shane Cutner into the fourth court, throws it away. But now it is intercepted by Elmer Love, right back to the Lions. Gives off to Alton Bird on the far side with a minute nine. Bird goes down to Tom Lucent to stand there. Dance with the foul line. He gives off to Duncan, floater goes. Rodney Duncan in the lane. Lion lead at seven, Western calls timeout. 59 seconds to play in the ballgame. Let's recap the situation again. Lions went into the delay game very effectively, but they are still showing some inexperience right now. They lead Rutgers 79-72 with 59 seconds to play in the ball game. And I think they're getting out and going to tranquilize around the bench because Al is doing too much. The point is he's supposed to do nothing right now, and he's trying to score baskets, trying to get too fancy. The fourth quarter was working beautifully when he let everybody else get a hand on the ball. Jeff Combs did a little bit of dribbling. Kevin Donahue showed us he could dribble. I didn't expect to see Kevin dribble to a pack of players like that, but Al has to let them do some of the work. Fletcher's is keen on him. Everybody else is free, and he's not, he's not really recognizing that fact right now. This is an experience going, and the time now maybe settle things down. Right now, Rutgers is really red hot to the floor. Rutgers is unbelievable from the floor right now, Steve. That's the only thing that gives them a semblance of a chance in this ballgame. The Lions lead by seven with 59 seconds to play. And if Alton Bird can run that delay game for another 59 seconds, the Lions will come across with their biggest upset in at least seven or eight years and certainly the biggest upset in the East in quite a while. We are sitting in on uh, some Lion history tonight, I think, Steve. 79-72, Lions by 7, 59 seconds to play. Lions head up the court with Kevin Donahue, Shane Cotner, Jeff Combs, Alton Bird, and let's see who's going to be the fifth starter for the Lions. It'll probably, of course, the man on the court here be Elmer Love, and now Elmer checks into the ball game. Four Rutgers, they go with Abdel Anderson, Mark Conlin, Hollis Copeland, Lions will inbound with Shane Cotner, will pick up the play to Jeff Combs. Rutgers double teams in the backcourt, really slow away. Now Elmer Love gets it, Love puts it to the floor, once gets it to Alton Bird, a block from his court line. Bird trying the delay game to the far side. Bird goes to the baseline, one bounce through the legs of Copeland to Kevin Donahue. Donahue goes to the baseline with 42, gets to Bird, put it the foul line, a foul on Alton Bird, the Lions will get foul shot. Mark Conlin falls on the foul, that's the fourth on Conlin, Alton Bird will go to the foul line, they'll have a one and one. 79-72, the Lions by seven, 40 seconds to play, Juan Mitchell entering for the Lions. Let's see who he's going to replace Shane Cutner coming out for Columbia. Mitchell in, only in there right now. The defense stop that Rutgers fast break. That's his job. Alton Bird gets the first foul shot. This the important one. If he hits this one, he gets the chance for another. He dips. Rutgers giving him the last. It is good. It is good. Alton Bird, the 5'7 sophomore guard from California, showing some calm right there. He'll try another. The Lions by eight. Here's Bird again. Good. 
81, 72, 40 seconds to play. Into the floor court, Eddie Jordan, a bed of the circle, now goes near side, 25 footer, short, rebound, around. It is pulled by Conlon. He taps it up, so good, rebound, that's good. Lions with the basketball, they get it up to Cones, long down court, misses that way, lays it up there, goaltending, goaltending on Eddie Jordan. And Tom Penders has officially signaled the win now. The Lions are embracing themselves on the fence, 83-74, with 20 seconds to play the Lions by nine. Into the floor court with six, with five, Lions by ten. Here's the jumper, short, rebound with one. That is it. That is it. That is it. Embracing on the court, the Columbia Lions have pulled off the upset of the 1976-77 season. They have defeated the Rutgers Scarlet Knights. They have done it convincingly by the score of 85 to 75. The Columbia Lions have come into the Rutgers Gymnasium and they have knocked off one of the top teams in the country last year and still one of the best teams in the East this year, the Rutgers Scarlet Knights by the score of 85-75. Credit the ball handling of Alton Bird. Credit the coaching of Tom Penders. Credit the shooting of Ricky Free, the poise of Elmer Love. It was a total team performance tonight. A total team performance tonight as the Lions have taken it over the Rutgers Scarlet Knights. The final score, once again, is Rutgers 80, uh, 75, Columbia 85. I'm uh, checking to see if we can go to a break. I believe we will not go to a break. We'll keep it here for the moment. The Columbia Lions came out in the first half. They took the lead in the first half just about right away, grabbed the lead at uh, 11.35 to play in the first half by the score of 15 to 14 when Juan Mitchell hit a foul shot and believe it or not they did not relinquish it the entire way the Lions went 39 to 27 at the half and they have pulled out an 85-75 victory over the Rutgers Scarlet Knights the Lions also just to uh, tell you and we'll be going through a break in just one second uh, back at the station the Lions also withstood pressure by Rutgers after they had gone up by 16 points in the second half Rutgers cut that margin down to the barest bones. I believe Rutgers got it down to three or four points. And then the Lions came right back, put it in Rutgers' faces, if you can excuse the term, and came away with the 85-75 victory. We will be back at Rutgers Gymnasium right after this. Have you missed any big play in this ball game? You find other Ivy League scores hard to find. Are you craving for an intelligent sports show on Monday nights at 9 p.m.? If the answer is yes to all the above questions, and even if it's not, why don't you check out Jockey Shorts, the half hour that puts sports fans in the know with Muhammad Ali, Kevin Burns, Lou Holtz, Tom Penders, Billy Mustassi, Sap Sanders, Pelay, Fred Sock, Tom Sebo, Rolando Acosta, Billy Jean King, Diana Nyad, right here on WKCR FM New York 89.9 on your dial, your number one station for college sports in New York City. Back here at the Rutgers Gymnasium, Russ Behrman along with Steve Teitelbaum. We are trying to assess this victory, trying to get our emotions down a little. 85-75, the Lions have defeated the Rutgers Scarlet Knights, one of the big upsets in major college basketball this year, Alton Bird, with some magics on the basketball court. Ricky Free and Elmer Love doing that bit, and it was a total team effort for the Lions. You understand you were sent off for a while at the end of the ball game, but uh, let me tell you something, the game was over before the last 30 seconds, the Lions winning it 5-10. We are going to wait here for a little bit, we are going to wait here for a little bit, waiting for uh, some of the Columbia players to come up. Tom Fenders and uh, some of the Columbia players may be coming back. We had informed them during their celebration with our 10 seconds to play that we would like anyone that they can give us uh, after this ball game, and so we'll see who the Lions come up with. Steve Seidelbaum, putting out the same, is one of the big surprises. Just to put this game in perspective, last year, what was like the Lions are capped on by Cook. They beat a 94 to 65 two years ago here, which is beat the Lions from 14 to 85. The big thing, the Lions didn't fold down the stretch, right? That's the difference Alton Bird makes. He dribbled around through between the legs of the various Rutgers players. Even the Rutgers crowd had to admit it was an absolutely phenomenal performance by Bird towards the end of the game. Really just superb. Ricky Free did the job when uh, it was needed. And that's uh, also on the boards. Ricky Free, uh, absolutely tremendous. At the end of the game, Elmer Love took over when Free fouled out. As you say, a team effort. Everybody on the team contributing either offensive rebounds, defensive rebounds, steals at the end of the game. You don't expect to take the ball away from Eddie Jordan too much, but the Lions did it a couple of times today, and that was really the big story in this game. So, 
a really just a superb effort. Something that I, I'm glad I'm here to see, Russ. Shane Copper and Juan Mitchell will be coming up in just a couple of minutes and will be set up to interview them. We'll also be running down these statistics. Shane Copper and Juan Mitchell coming out, and uh, we will get them set in our broadcast location in just a moment. Please excuse some of our technical difficulties. We had some problems here tonight, but everything is all set. And uh, right now we are talking with Shane Copper and Juan Mitchell of the Conjure Lions as I go down for a final time here at the broadcast location. And we also have Ricky Free here. <laughs> okay, first let me talk to Ricky Free. Ricky, you made a prediction on Tuesday. You said the Columbia Lions would be Rutgers. I nearly laughed in your face. Right. And we can see them today. I'm not laughing in your face. <laughs> okay, Ricky, you can look my face all you want. And uh, Alvin Bird come in here. We have many of the Lions players here. First, let's go from left to right. Shane Cotner. What are your feelings? What did the Lions do right tonight? What did they need to do against Rutgers? What did they do? Well, we just went out and played all our ball game. We took the tempo away from Rutgers and gave it to ourselves, and that was all there was to it. We just kept the ball where we wanted it. They couldn't run on it. They, we wanted to keep the game about the 50s or so, and uh, that's just about what we did. Shane, you're a sophomore, and that means that this team, with many sophomores, is entitled to make a mistake, especially when coming up against one of the best teams in the East and coming up against them in their home court. Did you feel the pressure in that second half? Well, I have less than I did feel the pressure, but uh, I'm sure all of us did, but we hung with it. We hit some quick shots. Oh, excuse me, sir. And I think we're going to keep on doing this the way we have tonight. Excuse me, Shane, right there. Alton Bird. Alton, uh, how do you do it? <laughs> There's uh, 13 other guys, huh? I can't do it without them. That's the key to it all. The wall behind me. I have my men with me. All they got to do is get open. I give the ball the best way I can. That's my job. I've been when uh, the Rector Scarlet Knights got the ball game down to about three in the second half. Uh, Tom Penders uh, talked to uh, you on the bench also during free throws. What was he telling you? Just calm down. You know, it was a matter of calming down. We got a little riled up. You know, Cope went through, one, through a couple of men. You know, we got a little excited. They got excited, and they had some super fans. I give it to them. They have some beautiful fans. So we had to calm down. When we calmed down, it was our ball game. We played the same way we did in the first half. That was the key to the game. Often just an unbelievable effort. Uh, how, how do you feel the Lions now will take this season uh, coming up from the Rutgers game? Do you think uh, the Lions, for example, have the possibility of maybe 20 wins? What would you say? I won't say, I won't predict 20 wins. I hope with a, little, a few breaks, okay, in any basketball game, in any sport, you need breaks. So what could be a super winner? We need a couple of breaks, okay? I would definitely say we should get 16, okay? A couple of breaks, we can go 20, 22, okay? But I'm praying, and I hope we don't let down after this one. We still got, like, 24 more, right? Exactly. Exactly. Juan Mitchell, right here. Juan started tonight after coming off the bench in the first ball game. Juan has to be a big thrill for you, and you are something under the board. Let me ask you this. Rutgers certainly had a lot of beef up there in the front court for the Lions uh, tonight. How did you handle the bigger man up front? Well, like, all week of practice, like, when I first started, like, uh, coaches worked on me to uh, power layup, power layup, they kept saying that. Like, in high school and even last year, I never came up against anybody that big. So, like, when I did layups, you know, I tried, tried to get past, you know, just laying the ball up. But out here, you can't do it with these people when they go 6'6", six, 6'6", six, 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 seven. So, you give them a big, get them up in the air, and you go up strong. So, that's all. The whole week, I was doing power layups, and it paid off. Juan, in your mind, what was the key to this ball game? Well, the key to this is not letting Rutgers or the fan intimidate us. Uh, we come out here, everybody say, Columbia, Columbia, who's Columbia? You know, we coming out here, now we're starting to show who Columbia is. So we come out here, people may say, you know, we were underdogs, but we didn't think we were underdogs. You know, we have a fair shot at it, you know. So we're happy we won because a lot of people think we were, but it ain't no need for a great celebration because it's not like if we did something, you know, out of the ordinary. Have you ever heard a crowd like the Rutgers crowd tonight? No, I tell you, once going down, after they got a dunk shot, I mean, the crowd, I couldn't hear anything. So they threw me a pass. I was the only one there. I turned around just in time to see it go out of bounds. I mean, I couldn't hear it. I didn't. Hey, there's just something else. Elmer Love. Elmer, it's a pleasure to talk to you in this moment. Elmer Love is a man who sat through a 4 and 22 varsity basketball season as uh, he was on as he was uh, on the freshman team and must have been frustrated because he couldn't play. He played through an 8 and 17 Y in varsity season. Elmer, um, you were on the court last year when Rutgers ran us off at halftime by 31, by 30 points of the half and beat us by 29 in the ball game. How does this feel for you? Uh, I don't think about revenge, but I have a little bit to do with that thing. Hey, good feel. Super. Just a bit of revenge for Elmer Love tonight. Elmer, I think it was your experience that was one of the keys to this ball game because when Rutgers got the score down to about three points in the second half, you were the man who was uh, 
come with the jumpers and laying them up underneath. Did you feel at that time that it was your place to control the ball game for the Lions? Uh, not that much control, but be a stabilizing factor. That's what I thought I had to do, and I thought I had to do. Uh, we were getting a little ragged, and I just wanted to not make any turnovers, get a shot if I could, and the doctor when I got the shot, and it went. What was Coach Penders calling you on the bench specifically, you being one of the more experienced players out there on the court? Uh, just that, right, you know, I thought both came down, or came down to that, you know, fifth moment, and not getting involved. <laughs> uh, last year, of course, you were the man to rebound the basketball because the Lions really didn't have the uh, ball handling. You had to bring it up the court, you had to score, you had to rebound, you had to do everything. The pressure is more or less off you in that respect now. You can play your own ball game. How do you feel if that was a factor tonight? Hey, you said you said three touches, exactly what it was. Uh, it gives me a lot more chance to, you know, concentrate on what I want to do. Um, I don't have to worry so much about turning over. Uh, I'm not that great of a dribbler, really. And it takes a lot of pressure off of you. It helps you out all the way around. Palmer, final score, Columbia 85, Rutgers 75. At Rutgers Gymnasium, how do you feel? Columbia 85, Rutgers 75. That's right. Thank you very much, Elmer. We'll be seeing you up at Iona. That's our next broadcast on Saturday. We've got to round five with statistics. We're also going to see you all day, though, at least statistics. They're really beautiful. And by the way, the band is just in front of us. So they will be meeting the Columbia team when they return to Columbia. The guys are not going to have this trip, but they're going to be in. The man is wondering if they call us up. They will be there. The group of teams, these people come on out and get the best of us going to be five years. Uh, I figured time now is about 10 o'clock. It should take around two hours or so to get back. So somewhere around midnight uh, at the gym. They'll be there a little bit early just in case. They'll see if I want to race back enough to celebrate the price. What a statistic. The, the, uh, Scoring on like this, four Rutgers with their 75 points. Their leading score, Carlos Copeland, 20 points. Uh, 10 for 14 from the floor. He did not take a foul shot all night. So Copeland got all the points from the court. And of those 20, 12 came in the second half. And Rutgers made the run at it. Copeland was a big part of that. But then he got cooled off towards the end as the Lions held out. Just behind Copeland with 18 points. Eddie Jordan, who was 7 for 13 from the floor. And uh, 4 for 6 from the free throw. 18 for the captain or co captain, Eddie Jordan. Thank you. 
CRFM, New York, 89.9 on your dial. This is the African show. Muntie, Okasa Chile. Muntie, Okasa Chile. A champon tinting. A champon tinting. What do you have to do? What do you have to do?